Take a look at the reaction I've drawn on this slide. The NH2 group appears to be displacing chlorine. In the second product, however, the position where the NH2 group bonds is not the same as the position from which the chlorine left. While we can think of the first product as coming from a straightforward nucleophilic aromatic substitution, clearly something different is going on with the second product. What's involved here is a new type of intermediate that we haven't encountered before, known as a benzyne, and this forms via elimination within a benzene ring. This video is all about the generation and reactions of benzynes. Although this rather odd substitution at a position different from where the leaving group is located in aromatics was observed before 1953, a seminal study in that year showed definitively that substitution was occurring at the carbon adjacent to the carbon bearing the leaving group in situations like this, where chlorobenzene is treated with potassium amide. In this key study, they used carbon-14 labeling of the carbon attached to the chlorine to show that the product is a mixture consisting of the typical nucleophilic aromatic substitution product in which the labeled carbon becomes bonded to the nucleophile, and a different product in which the nucleophile becomes bonded to the two position relative to that labeled position. While this result was hard to argue with, the explanation for this result is a little more complicated, as there are a number of mechanisms that could lead to this product. We could imagine, for example, addition followed by some kind of migration, sort of one-two rearrangement kind of step, leading to this product. Or we might imagine NH2- behaving not as a nucleophile at all and doing something completely different rather than nucleophilic addition. One result that argues against the rearrangement idea is that the yields of these two products are approximately equal. We get about a 50-50 mixture of these two products. That suggests that the intermediate leading to these two products is symmetric, and symmetric in such a way that NH2 can bond to either one of these two carbons, either the labeled or the unlabeled carbon, with approximately equal probability. It seems unlikely that the sigma complex formed after addition of NH2- minus is going to give the rearranged product with 50% probability. How can we think about generating a symmetric intermediate from this starting material? Well, one useful way forward is to think of the NH2- anion as a base rather than a nucleophile and consider what could happen if the NH2- anion acts as a base and the chlorobenzene starting material acts as an acid. The only hydrogens in this molecule are attached to the carbons of the aromatic ring. And if we consider the ortho meta and para hydrogens and think about inductive effects, it becomes apparent that the most acidic hydrogen is probably the one closest to the chlorine group. Because chlorine is electronegative, that's going to pull electron density away from this hydrogen, making it more acidic than the meta and para hydrogens. NH2- is a pretty strong base, and thus, at least partially, at least in a reversible sense, we can think about NH2- removing this most acidic proton. That could lead to an aryl anion like this. But with a leaving group next door, we can also imagine E2 elimination. And the compelling thing about the E2 step is that it generates exactly the symmetric intermediate that we would need to explain the result above. Notice that with the exception of the label, which I'll highlight in blue, with the exception of the carbon-14 label, the two carbons now that bond to NH2 in the observed products are symmetric, they're homotopic. And so, as goofy, as this sounds, eliminating Cl- by deprotonating an ortho hydrogen in chlorobenzene, it does help explain both the product distribution and the structures of the observed products. One of them comes from addition of the NH2- anion to the carbon bearing the label. Addition of the NH2- anion to the other carbon of the triple bond, however, leads to this product in which NH2 has substituted at the 2 position relative to where the chlorine was located and relative to where the label was located. Because the carbons of the triple bond are homotopic, we should expect this to occur, to occur with approximately equal probability, leading to a 50-50 mixture of the observed products. But that's all well and good. This mechanism explains the observed outcome. But let's hit pause for a second and really take a close look at this intermediate that we're proposing. What's remarkable about this is not so much that it's aromatic, but that there's a triple bond now within a six-membered ring. Because of the presence of the triple bond, the name of this intermediate ends in ine, and because it's part of an aromatic ring, we refer to this as a benzyne or arine intermediate. Benzyne is one example of a broader class known as arines, which include heteroaromatic versions of this. This looks bizarre. 
and the existence of benzynes was highly controversial in their early years, as we might imagine. But nowadays, it's been well established that benzynes are viable intermediates that can be used for a variety of transformations, nucleophilic aromatic substitutions like this, and others involving thinking about this new bond as a pair of pi electrons. Let's take a moment to dissect this benzyne intermediate in a little more detail. This is a quantum mechanically optimized structure of benzyne, and the geometry at carbons 2 and 3 makes it clear that these carbons are not quite sp hybridized. They don't have the 180 degree bond angle and the linear geometry required of sp hybridized atoms. Instead, they look a little bit more like sp2 hybridized atoms rather than sp. This means that the pi bond that's within the plane of the ring, the newly formed pi bond during elimination, is somewhat bent. And this means that this bond is relatively weak, and so one way we can represent it is via a resonance structure with diradical character, with the two electrons that make up the bond sitting on their individual atoms. Here are the atomic orbitals that are used to construct the pi and pi star molecular orbitals corresponding to this bond that's in the plane of the benzene ring. If we focus on the rotational axes of these orbitals, we can see that they're not aligned as they really should be to create a strong pi bond. In a strong pi bond, these orbitals are parallel, but in this arrangement, they're at an angle. This implies that there's a little bit of bond bending going on in this pi bond. And you can imagine in the pi and pi star orbitals corresponding to this pi bond, we see the same effect. The orbital is curved rather than straight above and below the carbon atoms. That makes the bond relatively weak, and it lends importance to this diradical resonance structure here. Although the electrostatic potential map makes it look like the triple bond is relatively electron-rich, this is only relative to everything else within this molecule. Thinking about reactions of benzene with nucleophiles, it's still helpful to imagine both of these carbons as electrophilic, as electron-deficient. On the next slide, we'll see how benzene reacts as an electrophile with nucleophiles like NH2-. In a sense, the benzene intermediate turns the idea of the addition-elimination mechanism of nucleophilic aromatic substitution on its head. Benzene reacts through an elimination first, followed by addition mechanism. This can open up new synthetic possibilities since nucleophiles can be positioned at relatively unique locations, such as meta to a methyl group. This substitution pattern with an alkyl group and an OH group in a meta relationship would be difficult to achieve otherwise. The only other way we might do this is, for example, going through a nitro group, alkylating, and then converting to a diazonium and treating with water, but the use of a benzene approach, which, for example, just uses sodium hydroxide together with the halobenzene, is a much more direct route. Incidentally, we know that this reaction must be occurring through a benzene intermediate, since no substitution is observed at the meta position with respect to the chlorine group. The only products that we observe come from addition of OH- to one of the two carbons of the triple bond in the benzene intermediate. Reaction of an analogous parasubstrate shows us the same thing, that the reaction must be occurring through a benzene intermediate, as we observe no substitution at the meta position with respect to where the chlorine is located. Notice here again, as we saw in this example above, that substitution is only occurring at the carbons that are part of the triple bond in the benzene intermediate. And what both of these examples highlight is the utility of benzene intermediates for opening the door to new types of substituted benzenes that would be more difficult to access otherwise, especially these meta-substituted alkyl benzenes with a good nucleophile at the meta position with respect to the alkyl group.